Today's watch is the fourth from Star King to make an appearance on the channel. The previous three had subtle hints of Omega. This one is a bit of a sledgehammer. Hi, Ronnie at last watch here. Star King has sent me another watch. Unlike the previous dress watches with snappy names like the AM0184, the AM0171 or the AM0151, this, the AM0284 SS17, has been called the Blue Water Ghost. Well, actually, that's not quite true. There are two colour versions of this watch, this rather radiant blue and a glorious green. The green is advertised on the AliExpress Starking official store as the Greenwater Ghost. The blue option can be found under the same listing. It didn't make sense to call this a Greenwater Ghost, so I took some artistic license with the renaming. Before we get started, if you haven't already done so, I would appreciate if you would support the channel and consider subscribing. Be sure to hit that like button and leave a comment. If you'd like to learn more about Starking, then consider checking out my other reviews. I'll add a link at the top of your screen for the AM0171, which has a little history on the brand. The Starking has been sent to me free of charge, in the hope that I will share it with you ahead of the AliExpress sale, which starts on the 11th of November. I'm not being paid for this review, but I do get to keep the watch. Under YouTube regs, I have to tell you that this is a sponsored video. You can decide for yourself how impartial I was at the end of the review. The AM0284 is currently selling with a 12 month warranty for just under $74 or £59 on the official Star King store. You can pick it up in the November sale for a shade under $65 or £51.5. Let's take a look at the Water Ghost starting with its specs and see if it's worth shelling out for. It has a case diameter of 40mm. The bezel is a little wider at 40.2mm. A fairly standard lug width of 20mm and an accommodating lug to lug of 48.2mm. And don't believe the Star King store, not including the Cyclops, it has a case thickness of 13.6mm, not the stated 11mm. The weight on the bracelet size for my 7 inch wrist and minus 4 links comes in at 134.2 grams. At first glance you might consider this a homage to the Omega Seamaster 300M. It certainly borrows a few design cues but on closer inspection I think they may have raided the parts bin for their Rolex homages. The 316L stainless steel case is no Aquaterra but it comes with a few deceptions. The top of the case is brushed, there are no chamfered, polished edges. Its suggested slim profile is highly polished. I say suggested slim profile as the case benefits from a rather thick case back. The lugs are longer than they need to be and come to a sharp edge where they meet the bracelet. The bracelet end links sit back within the lugs, what you might consider to be a poor fit, but this all helps to give the illusion of twisted lugs. The decent sized sign screw down crown sits well protected between highly polished squared off crown guards. I haven't had any issue unthreading, winding or replacing the crane. You may have noticed there is no cupcake helium escape valve at the 10 o'clock position. The apron flared bezel has a fairly standard polished coin edge in place of the Omega scallop. The bezel turns unidirectionally and quite securely through 120 clicks. It has a dull flat smooth click and the tiniest of back play but only if you're heavy handed. The blue insert is old school aluminium with silver markers for the first 15 minutes. Arabics for the 10 minute markers that sit on tiny indices. There are large indices for the 5 minute markers and a standard inverted triangle at the 12 o'clock position. The slightly raised flat crystal is hard legs with an added cyclops for the date at 3 o'clock. Yes, a cyclops and it's at 3 o'clock. What is this trickery? Below the crystal is a clean, uncluttered, brush finished rehort that drops down to the star of this watch, a delicious blue wave dial. Heavily copied, <clears throat> inspired by the Omega Seamaster 300M. I can only guess how this dial was produced. Whether this was stamped or molded might be a fair assumption. 
It doesn't have the clean cut laser contours of the Omega dial, but for a watch costing little more than £50 or $50, you can hardly complain. Be sure to add a comment with your thoughts below. There are applied silver frame round our indices, except for the 6 and 9 which have single batons. There are double batons to mark the 12 o'clock position. Unlike the Omega, the Star King has its date window at 3 o'clock. It's a simple cutout frame which shows black arabics on a white date wheel. The Cyclops gives an approximate 2 times magnification. Maybe a little less so. The dial has a white printed chapter ring for the minutes and seconds. There is also a white printed Lotus Fruit logo and Star King name just below the 12 o'clock position. Don't get me started on the Star King name. Star King or Star King. Above the 6 o'clock position, there is two lines of white printed text. Uniquely, it says 330 feet, 100 meters, with reference to its water resistance. And the word automatic, a reminder that this is an automatic watch. With regards to the printed 330 feet, I think this was the only option that Star King had to come close to having 300M on the dial. Like the wave dial, the skeletonized hour and minute hand markers are unmistakably Omega in origin. They even copy the geometric shapes at their tips, with a loom triangle on the minute hand and a circle on the hour hand. The second hand is a long, sleek, elegant stick with a loomed lollipop more than midway along its length. It shares the Omega paddle counterbalance, but forgoes the red painted tip. I'll pop in a loom shot here, where you'll note that there is a smidgen of loom on the skeletonized hands. A nice touch. The rear of the watch has a screw down dive style display case back, which is framed with some text highlighting the watch's bullet points. Star King, automatic, all stainless steel, its reference number, 100 meter water resistance and 24 joules. Below the applied lotus fruit on the display case back is the watch's automatic movement and one that I am becoming quite familiar with, the Seiko NH35, an automatic movement with 24 joules which hacks and hand winds and vibrates at 21,600 beats per hour or 6 ticks per second. It has a bi-directional winding rotor and a power reserve of more than 40 hours. It also has a date complication with quick set facility. This particular movement is running at around minus 6 seconds per day. The bracelet is an all stainless steel 3 link oyster style that you might expect to find on many a Rolex homage. The links are solid, no flimsy rolled steel here. The outer links are brushed except for their outer edge which are polished. The centre links are entirely polished and an absolute smudge magnet. The bracelet has split pins, it's fairly easy to resize. There are however no arrow indicators on the reverse of the links to indicate which way to push the pins. I suggest you tread carefully. There is some movement between these links. It's a bit of a rattler. The bracelet starts at 20mm between the lugs. There's good and bad here. The end links are female which won't add any length to the watch's lug to lug. Unfortunately they are also hollow. The bracelet tapers to 18mm at the buckle. The buckle jumps up to 20mm wide. The buckle is brushed with a stamped Star King name. It's a simple fold over safety with catch release that reveals a polished stamp deploying clasp. The buckle has more than enough micro adjustment to help you get a perfect fit. There is a rather unsightly overhang with a less than dull edge. Disappointingly, the locking action of the clasp requires some attention. Just pushing it closed doesn't have the desired effect. I find it needs the assistance of a finger on the reverse to engage a secure lock. Given its 40mm diameter, the watch wears relatively well, hitting that sweet spot on my 7 inch wrist. And with a decent fit, the rattles of the bracelet have disappeared. Courtesy of that fat case back, the blue water ghost does appear to float above my wrist and sits a little prouder than I would like. I was quite excited about getting hands on with the AM0284, my first dive style watch from Star King, but it's by no means a dive watch. It sits in a price range alongside some other Chinese brands that offer way more for your money. I would love this watch to have a sapphire crystal, 
ceramic bezel, solid end links, a better locking clasp, and 200 meters of water resistance. I'm somewhat skeptical of its stated 100 meter credentials. On the plus side, it does come with a Seiko NH35 movement, a solid, albeit shaky bracelet, and a touch of loom. More importantly, it has that Omega inspired wave dial, which at 50 quid might be all the incentive you need to add it to your collection. If you feel inspired to pick up one of these blue or green water ghosts, then I would definitely hold off for the November sale. If you're watching this review and you've missed the sale, then be patient as AliExpress sales come around every quarter. I would always recommend using the official stores on AliExpress over the multitude of resellers. The resellers are known to advertise stock that they don't have, hence the overly long delivery times. I am an AliExpress affiliate, so I will add a link in the video description below. If you choose to use it and make any purchase, then the channel will receive a small commission. I thank you. Many thanks again to Starking for providing the AM0284 for review. Be sure to let me know in the comments below what you think of their Omega Rolex mishmash. Better still, if you have one, share your thoughts and experiences with the Starking. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next video.